So we do have clinical care, gui clinical care guidelines that were published a couple of years ago. We've got a great partnership here with um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, so CHOP, which has some of like our leading researchers. We do recommend clinicians to have an initial you know, point of care there. Right now it's completely symptomatic based, so we're really evaluating you know, where is the child now and what evaluations do we need to undergo to see you know, where they're at in terms of like MRI and looking at like their leukodystrophy progression and then also when new symptoms arise, how have things changed since we were last evaluating. Um, so it's really a multi-systemic care. Like I said, they have GI doctors, they have neurologists, they have, you know, individuals who are focusing on like their muscular like tone and body system. So we'll have PTs that are involved, OTs that are involved to try and maintain like what muscle like function they're able to. Um, we'll have very beginning, we'll have a speech therapist involved actually for swallow test because that's one of the first things that can, you know, go away and they want to see how well are we doing in that area and when is it the appropriate time to switch from oral feeding to um, you know, I get G-tube mechanism. And so, uh, you know, ultimately these kids are seeing dermatologists for like their dry skin. So it really takes like, um, and obviously a geneticist, <laughs> a genetic counselor should really be a part of their care team to help get them these various recommendations and referrals and kind of keep everyone in the loop because unless their physician knows about this condition, they don't always know what the next step is because it can be really complex. So it becomes um, quite a burden on a lot of our families to have to constantly be that advocate and be that educator in every room that they walk into. I mean, think if your child is sitting in front of you super sick and you're having to go, not only is my child all experiencing all of these things, they've got MSD and they go, well, you know, what the heck is that? I don't know what to do with that. And then the parents have this additional role to have to educate them not only on what the condition is, but their medical history of this child from the past, you know, five, ten, you know, years potentially.